I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Laura Zhu, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And congratulations. Thank you. Great. Well, tell us about yourself, tell us where you teach, and tell us what you teach. I teach at Toby Johnson Middle School in the heart of Elk Grove, and I teach Photoshop and an award-winning yearbook program. Tell us about the yearbook. Our yearbook is um, a nationally recognized yearbook. It's called the Jamboree, and my students decide every year whether they're going to go competitive or not, and the last several years they've gone competitive, and this year they placed in the top three middle school yearbooks in the country. Wow, fantastic. Yes. So tell us about uh, teaching uh, the technology part for students. Do they adapt pretty quickly? Because they've kind of grown up with technology. It's probably you more than them that really has to learn how to keep up. And that's why I've switched to being a facilitator. I let them be the teachers and the guides in the room, and I just make sure that we're all on pace doing what we need to do. And I stand back, and I have a way of teaching that allows them to show me how to do new tips and tricks. Mm. So they must really dive in and get excited about oh, yeah. every day. Yes. Yeah. So, so what is that like having to keep up with technology so much? Well, you know, it's funny because, you know, you'd think you'd have anxiety about creating lessons, but my students do that now too. So I learn, you know, just by watching them. I, I teach them a lesson and then they get excited by it and they go home and they YouTube how to do it and they find more ways of doing it and they come back with their videos and they say, can we try this today? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So then they teach me, I teach it to the next class and we just keep building on that and growing. How do you see uh, technology being integrated even more into the classroom? I mean, it, it's step by step, you know, we're getting into the smart boards and all those things, but you know, where do you see education going and in infusing more technology? Well, you know, I have a lot of new teachers at my school, and one of them in my department, I walked past her classroom one day and she was sticking her head out the door and she had a student out there and she had her iPhone in his face and he was talking into her iPhone. So later I asked her what that was all about and she said, well, he hadn't turned in his journal all week, but he'd been talking in class and he'd been active about all of the conversations. And I realized he didn't know how to put it into words and, and put it in his journal. So I was using an app to record him. It transferred it into words. It emailed it to her. She printed it out. He cut it out and glued it in her journal so that he didn't have to lose those points. It didn't cost anybody anything. Yeah. And I thought, you know, this is how our young teachers are bringing technology into the classroom and making it relevant. Right. And, and there's so many changes and innovations like you're familiar with the flipped classroom process? Yes. Explain what that is and, and how you think that might be useful. So I think that is amazing because you do all your learning at home. You go home and you watch your lessons and you can watch them at your own pace. You can rewind them, play them again, rewind them, play them again, have all your questions ready for the teacher. Then you go back to the classroom to do your homework and then the teacher guides you and helps you through the parts that were challenging instead of teaching you at school and then you go home without help and that's where you find your challenges. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. So if we slip to more of that type of model, that seems to, to um, promote more of, of a team concept in the classroom, the coll Absolutely. collaborative learning. And that's what I try to do as a yeah. facilitator. And I have cups in my room. I have a green cup on top of a red cup on every computer. And when a student has a question or needs assistance, they put their red cup up and anyone in the classroom can go answer that. And it really helps everybody have a team approach. There's a lot of collaborative learning and everybody kind of just seems on the same page and it's, we all move forward together instead of just five people really doing well. Everybody's lifted with that. I noticed in the beginning you, you referred to yourself as a facilitator more than a teacher. Yeah. What's the difference? Um, the old sage on the stage, you know, I, in a computer lab, you can't stand in the front of a room or you can't see what anyone's doing. So naturally, I stand in the back so I can see all 35 monitors at once in case anybody's off task. Mm -hmm. But once you realize you can step away and everybody's still learning and you don't need to have all the eyes on you, you're able to understand that a lot more learning can happen when you step out of the way. And that's what a facilitator would do. So you get out of the student's way. Yeah. <laughs> and they teach themselves, and I help guide them when they need it. And so obviously they, they come in pretty motivated? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And because there's no standardized testing for what I teach, I think it relaxes them just a little bit that nobody's looking at every point they make. And I also have a unique grading system in that you can do your assignment as many times as you want until you get the grade that you're satisfied with. Mm. That helps too. Get some good response. Oh, yeah. And then uh, how is that work as far as the relationship with the students? 
you, you, they're able, you're able to relate pretty well with them. Oh, yeah. I think building relationship, particularly at the secondary level, is critical. Because if you don't have that relationship, there's not going to be a transfer of knowledge. Teaching in the middle school system is a little bit different because of, you know, a lot of, a lot of teachers will say, I will never teach middle school, never. And, and, but those who do kind of thrive on it. Oh, absolutely. Tell me what you like about working with middle school students. Number one is they still think you're funny. They're young enough to have a lot of humor in the classroom and you can have that relationship back and forth, but they're old enough that if you need them to sit down for any length of time, take notes, study for a test, and have that regular higher level structure, they can do that too. So they have this perfect balance of being young and you know, really respecting you as another adult in their life and then being old enough and mature enough to behave like the advanced learner that they are. Mm -hmm. So you, you really like that age population. And yeah. you know, and I just stumbled into it because those were the sub jobs that were available because I thought no, you know, no one wanted them. But you'll find most middle school teachers will stay there forever because it's the magic age. Well, t how did you get into teaching? Well, <laughs> the long route because I come from a family of teachers. Everyone in my family, professors, teachers. And so when I was my rebellious teenage self, I decided to go into business. And so I got my undergrad degrees in business, went back and got an MBA. But it was in between all those stints that I would go volunteer and teach in China or go teach at the elementary classrooms. And I finally realized, oops, that's really where my heart is. And so I went back to school after all that and got a credential. And I was lucky because my business credential put me into a computer lab. And that's where I didn't know that's where I really wanted to be. Interesting. I know. And how long have you been teaching now? This is my 10th year. 10th year. Mm -hmm. In that amount of time, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen uh, in education overall? Well, we could go with the negative, the dramatic change in funding, mm. because it wasn't until my last five years that I started getting pink slipped every year. Um, but as far as the positive is what we talked about earlier with the technology and my students coming with so much knowledge already that we already have this foundation that we can move so much further now than I could 10 years ago with my students because they've already picked up their touch typing in elementary school. They have a solid foundation of how to do internet research. They're eager to look up things online so we can just move full steam ahead as soon as I get them. Mm, so, so really most of the motivation is already taken care of before they even step in your classroom because they're really excited to be there. As far as what I teach, yes. yes. As far as you can tell. <laughs> So in that amount of time, you've seen, you know, obviously some funding changes and whatnot. Um, is, is it difficult to, to work in that kind of environment where you know that you may not be able to get the equipment you need uh, and you kind of have to rely on other means to try to reach those students? Well, that's where I'm lucky I have a business background mm -hmm. because then I can teach um, Photoshop classes in the summer and invite elementary schools and parents send their kids to my little camps and I can make money from my program that way. Um, I really push the marketing part of my yearbook and selling ads and how we do things so that we can fund our own program. Our yearbook program every year is minimum $40,000 and I have a group of 13 year olds who run it and they can. Um, the sad part with all that funding is what's happening to the new teachers and that's where I'm scared for the future because these first year teachers who are coming right out of college and don't have money you know, are picked up on temporary contracts or automatically assume they won't have the same job at the end of the year. And like I talked about earlier with the teacher with her iPhone and her, you know, great ways of interacting with her students, th that's the exact one we let go this year mm -hmm. and she won't be returning. Yeah. So but you would still encourage people to pursue education as a career? Yes, <laughs> especially now that I don't think many people will be going into it because we'll really need you in a few years. So what's, what was it like being named a teacher of the year for the Elk Grove District? That was really exciting. and. You know, I've always pictured Teachers of the Year as the traditional English, history, math, and science, and so it was really nice to see that an elective teacher was being supported and brought out into that light, because I do think sometimes we're the reason why kids go to school. Well, those are the, the different types of subjects that do keep kids coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Laura Zhu, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Oak Grove Unified School District. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. Thank you.